Why would they tell you to do that? So you can burn fat, more fat. Now, is that true or is that false? Well, actually, it's true. Okay, now you're, you're thinking it through going, oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. I caught you there. It was, it's like, the, does cholesterol cause heart disease? You know, no. But, I, but everyone wants to say yes. Okay, so, yes, you do burn a fat when you're in that fat-burning zone. However, what happens after you're, you come off the treadmill and then later that day and the next day, are you still burning fat? Yeah. No. That's the problem. So a little bit of truth <laughs> didn't make it necessarily a good thing. So, of course, here we have all the people on the treadmill for their hour in their fat burning zone. But what studies show, the energy you use during workout, you use the opposite for the next day or two. So let's put it, let's say it differently then. So if you're burning fat for 30 minutes to, a, you know, whatever, to an hour on the treadmill, so what, then for the next day or two, you're burning the opposite source. Actually, you're going to burn muscle for sugar. What are the two things your cells use for energy? Sugar and fat. That's it. Sugar and fat. Okay. And one of the things that we learned about the healing diet is that it takes you from being stuck in sugar burning mode. It fixes the hormone receptors. That's why we call it the healing diet. And then now it allows you to be able to burn your fat for energy. And what hormone gets fixed in that process? Leptin. And also insulin, because insulin is another fat-storing hormone. So by doing this, by fixing these hormone receptors, particularly insulin and leptin, now we can listen to this, these hormones and take our fat and use it for energy. Now you're a fat burner. When you're a sugar burner, you have no ability to burn your fat for energy and now you're stuck in sugar burning mode. Okay, so the cell can only use two things for energy, sugar or fat. So when you're exercising, your body's forced to burn fat. You stop exercising, now your body's gonna take and it needs to burn sugar, and what it does is it actually starts to break down your muscle. And you remember my one slide, it said that, would, do you wanna look like a marathon runner or a sprinter? Because sprinters have a very vascular look. They're very lean, despite their diet. I mean, literally, most of them. And they're very muscular people. They have these you know, perfect physiques without even working for them. So something is happening in their training to make them look a certain way. When you look at a marathon runner, something's happening to them in their training, what they're doing every day, to make them look a certain way. If you look at an aerobics instructor, they look a certain way for that reason as well. Because most aerobics instructor, instructors actually you know, have, you think of them, man, they bounce around in that gym how many classes a week? 15 classes a week. You'd think they would be thin as a rail and they're not, typically. Because what happens is, is they're burning their muscle when they're not exercising. They're losing muscle, their metabolism's slowing down, and they're keeping their fat. So marathon runners look catabolic with fat around their stomach. They don't have that lean look that a sprinter has. So what's happening physio physiologically? What's happening is when you're on the treadmill for your hour burning your fat, a hormone called growth hormone starts to go down after you're done with the exercise. And when growth hormone starts to go down, you start to lose muscle mass, and your body takes it and burns it for sugar. Now let's take the exact opposite. Let's look at a sprinter. What does a sprinter do on a daily basis? A sprinter is doing short bursts as hard as he can, right? And that's how they train. Short bursts as hard as he can. 30 to 60 seconds, all out. What's taking place there? The sprinter is, t what are they using for energy, by the way? So the they're using what? No, they're using sugar. Remember what the study showed. The study showed that the energy you use during exercise, you use the opposite later. So when you're on the treadmill for 30, uh, 30, uh, 30 minutes to an hour, you're burning fat. But later you're burning sugar, and your body's getting its sugar from where? Your muscle. And that's where the marathon runners are getting it, and the aerobics instructors.
so you're burning muscle. And your growth hormone drops. Bad combination for weight, uh, for weight loss. So, the sprinter is burning all sugar. He's not burning fat at all. He doesn't have enough time to burn fat. That's a long process to so take your fat, burn it. You know, it, it's a more efficient process, but it takes too long. So it burns what you have is called stored sugar. Where do you store sugar? Yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, in the cells of your muscles and your liver. And then your body, during that sprint, it can take that and burn it up, okay? The study said what you burn during exercise, you burn the opposite later. So then what's the sprinter going to burn for the next 36 to 48 hours? Yeah. Fat. The opposite of what they burn during the exercise. That's why burst training or sprint training, or any of the, whatever we want to call it, surge training, interval training, is better for weight loss than what we would refer to as aerobic training or endurance training. Does everybody get that? Now, what's neat about it is what happens in the sprinters is that in, in this process, and the reason why they burn fat for the next two days is because their growth hormone goes up so long and their testosterone levels. So they get into this state where their body is perfect to burn fat. They become these metabolic machines where their body is literally wanting to hold on to its muscle, which increases your metabolism, and it wants to burn all of its fat. So the exact opposite to what you're taught is true. Just like most of what I've been teaching you from the day. Fat is good. They've been telling you fat is bad. <laughs> Cholesterol doesn't cause heart disease. So we're, we're, we're reteaching you. And this is another concept that you have to say, okay, I have to break this concept of getting on the treadmill for half an hour, an hour. Now, there's good news here. There's great news, as Warren would say. The great news is I just cut your workout time down dramatically. Yes, it takes about... 10 minutes to do this. Now, please, for everyone listening and people, you know, with the, getting DVDs listening, you do, and it says this on your sheet, you're going to do three to four sets of 30 to 60 second bursts. So you're going to go 80 to 90 percent of your maximum for 30 to 60 seconds, rest for three or four minutes and you're gonna do that three or four times. That should take you about 10 minutes. I'm gonna say it again, for those of you who failed the VCS test. <laughs> you're gonna go all out for 30 to 60 seconds, or close to it anyway. And I'm gonna say this also, you can do any exercise you want. You can do a stepper, you can do a treadmill, you can run up your backyard, you can run up your driveway, you can run up steps, I don't care. A elliptical trainer, doesn't matter what you do. The idea is to get your heart rate up to 80, 90% of its maximum for 30 to 60 seconds. Rest for three, three, four minutes, whatever, and then do it again. Rest, then do it again. You do that three or four times. It should take you 10 minutes. But it, invariably, someone's going to say, so I do it for 10 minutes? <laughs> no, you do it for 30 to 60 seconds. I'm going to show you a video. We'll yeah. never, you, you can stretch first. You can do all that. But really, from the things that I have read, it, it really didn't make much of a difference. What I recommend you do, the first set, you do maybe like 60 or 70%. So, you know, you, you do a slight warm-up just to get the blood flowing. Um, so you go on the treadmill and just kind of, you know, the first one easy. So I say do four. The first one is literally a warm-up where you go half your, you know, half your speed. And then the next one, you should be able to, you know, go, you know, you'll notice by the third one, you'll be, you know, you'll be really geared up to go. If it takes you longer to warm up, do two warm ups, you know, but again, warm up with the thing you're doing, warm up by doing a 60 second surge, but just don't go as hard, you know, just walk fast or run slower, you know, and then build up to it. Um, but that's, that's it. So you want to take the break, you know, hard, take the break, hard, take the break. After, I feel, after you actually do an exercise is the best time to stretch. Okay, so I, my, I, my preference would be to do a warm-up in the sense of don't go real hard on the first one or two, and then for the next three, go hard. Okay, that would be a good warm-up. 
So getting on the treadmill and walking for 20 minutes 